Gunpoint is a game about breaking into secure buildings with a bunch of stupid gadgets. That includes a pair of projectile trousers that let you jump absurdly high and throw yourself through windows. You've also got sticky gloves that let you climb walls, and a trench coat that stops you dying from long falls, but doesn't stop you falling flat on your face like an idiot. You're meant to be a freelance spy, so you take jobs from clients who usually want some sensitive data stolen or wiped. That's not all you'll be doing, but in the missions I want to show you here, you're just trying to get to a computer and steal something from it. Between missions you can buy new gadgets, and the one I'm about to get is the one the game is really about. It's called the Crosslink, and it's sort of a hacking tool, but it works a little bit differently to hacking in other games. So without the Crosslink, this mission is impossible. The computer I'm trying to get to is behind an electronically locked security door, and there's no key to open it. All I've got is this light switch, which works, but doesn't really help. But in Crosslink mode, I can see how all this stuff is wired up, and I can even change it. So I can drag a connection from this light switch to the door I want to open, and then I just have to press it. You can also upgrade your gadgets, so here I'm just adding some strength to my jump with the points I've earned from my missions. Throwing yourself through windows is cool, but knocking someone else through windows is cooler. When you get a new ability like the crosslink, I want to give you some space to play around with it and before the game gets any harder. So this level is actually pretty easy, but it's also very open-ended if you want to experiment with ridiculous solutions. So I've got to one terminal, but there's two more on this level, and there's a lot of different ways to get to them. But I'm going to show you the most complicated one I know. If I wire this elevator to this light, then when I arrive it'll turn the light off. And it'll also open this door. Then the guard on this floor will go to the light switch, but instead of turning the lights back on, it's going to turn off the lights on the lower floor. The guard down there will try and press his light switch, and I want that to shut the door. And you'll see why in a sec. So arrive on the floor, the lights go out. Guard goes to the light switch, but it doesn't work, so he just patrols the dark area and walks through the door just as the guard on the lower floor reaches his own light switch, which shuts it, locking him out. And that leaves me free to hack this computer without being shot. It's pretty simple, really. <laughs> when I discovered that solution, uh, my friend Craig was in the room, and I made a bizarre noise, and Craig said, did something emergent just happen? <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> On my way out, I'm going to stop on the first floor and let the guard back indoors. And then, when I reach the top, I'm going to send the lift back down, so it will shut him inside. And that's because I've got to leave uh, this way, so I want him to be shut inside so he can't shoot me. Now this next level is a bit trickier. You've got to break into a police station and get some records from the morgue. And the straight fight guards will shoot you dead almost instantly, so you have to make sure you take them by surprise. And here I'm going to surprise this guy with the door. The green wire through this door is uh, a wire that goes to a circuit box, and that's protecting all the connections on the green circuit at the moment. So I need to get to it and tap into it before I can rewire anything that's on the green circuit. So I'm going to turn this light off just to get that guard out of the way. Now this guy's an enforcer, he's got body armor and he's quite bulky so I can't just pounce him and punch him. But if I can get out of his way until he's in a more precarious position then I can still hit him with enough force to knock him out. So I'm coming up to the basement, which is where the computer is I need to get to. It's behind two vault doors, and these close a little while after they open. 
So I can try wiring a switch and a camera to them so that I can trigger them one after the other. But you have to get the timing just right to get through there. And I don't really like timing challenges, so I prefer to find a more indirect solution. So what I'd really like is for these two doors to open without me having to press anything, so I don't have to keep running back and pressing buttons and stuff. So I need something that I can connect to either of them and that will work on some kind of timer. And luckily the elevator buttons for both these two floors of the elevator are on both the red and the blue circuit, so I can connect either of those to these doors. So what I'm going to do is set it up in a loop so that the doors trigger the elevators and the elevators trigger the doors. And if I do it right, then they will just keep on triggering each other in an infinite loop and the doors will keep on opening and shutting and I won't have to press anything. Um, now the details of how you do that obviously are a bit complicated um, and it's not going to be obvious just from watching me, but when you start to play around with Crosslink, um, it's easy to just kind of sit there and get carried away messing around with how all the things work and what linking this to linking that does. Um, and it becomes fairly intuitive. But if it all seems a bit complicated, um, don't worry about that because this is, <laughs> again, one of the most complicated solutions to this problem. Uh, there are loads and loads of easier ways and there's even a gadget that just links things that are on different circuits so you have enough charges for that. You could just link one door to the other, hit a switch and solve it. Um, I want to make sure there's always some sort of clever shortcuts if uh, you don't want to try a particularly complicated solution. I won't talk you through every step of this mission because hopefully you get the idea by now. But when I started making Gunpoint, I said it would be free, and a few people said I was nuts. Then I brought two artists on, John Roberts and Fabian Van Dommelen, and they made it look really nice, and even more people said I was nuts. Now I've made it quite a bit longer with a shop and an upgrade system and a story and branching conversations and stuff, and I'm a lot less confident that I'm not nuts. <laughs> so I need your advice. Uh, stop by gunpointgame.com and tell me whether you think it's worth money or not. You've seen three missions here, including this one, and there'll be about 20 of those in total to give you some idea of the length. If you want to stay up to date with when Gunpoint's coming out, you can follow Gunpoint Game on Twitter. If you'd like to help test it, all you have to do is email me, the details will be on the game site. And Gunpoint is in the Independent Games Festival, so if you're an IGF judge, I'd love it if you had time to check it out before the deadline on Monday. A few people have asked if the game's going to have any music, and the answer is yes, if someone makes some awesome music for it. <laughs> if you'd like to make the music, uh, the best way you can show me what you have in mind is to try adding some to this trailer. So I'll put up a version without my stupid voice in it on gunpointgame.com. I'm also interested in making a Linux version, but I have no idea how. The Windows version is made in Game Maker, and I don't know of a way to port it over, but if you know anything about making games for Linux and want to help, let me know and we'll see if we can figure something out. Generally, too, if you want to get in touch for any reason, uh, it's always welcome. I'm pentadact at gmail.com, and the game site is gunpointgame.com.